Remember this, Jim. Nobody has a right to a gun unless he knows how to think when he handles it. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Yes. Oh, Mr. Paladin? Oh, you get ready to go away again? Yes, hey boy, I have to make a trip out to Nebraska. What's on your mind? Oh, uh, Mr. Paladin, uh, hey boy, have exceptional good fortune. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Oh, yes, uh, uh, you know guest in hotel, Colonel Seymour Van Courtney? Well, that slick-looking gent who took the suite on the third floor? Yes, uh, well, uh, Colonel Van Courtney think, hey boy, very nice fella. Well, I'll go along with that. Oh, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, so, Colonel Van Courtney, with utmost generosity, permit hey boy to buy a mining stock. Mining stock? Stock that con artist is floating? Oh, he saw. And he boy now have investment in Gold on West Consolidated Mine Company Limited. Oh, hey boy, won't you ever learn? Too bad you must go away, Mr. Paladin. Uh, maybe uh, hey boy could talk to Colonel Van Courtney when he come back. Uh, hey boy would say, you good friend. Maybe he permit you to buy stock too. Where's Colonel Van Courtney now? Um... Oh, he checked out a hotel this morning. I uh, must look after vast business enterprise. Yes, yes, I see. Oh, hey, boy. You work hard for your money, and it seems time you started thinking about your future. But when I get back, we're going to have a long talk. Oh, yes, uh, uh, now maybe by that time, uh, he, boy, can fix so uh, you can make splendid investment, too. <laughs> Never mind, hey, boy. <laughs> I was following a rutted trail through the Nebraska plains, dry, desolate land, parched by drought. I was still a good many miles from the nearest town when my horse stepped into a prairie dog hole and went down, breaking his leg. It's a bad thing to have to shoot a horse. The sun was already low in the west when I shouldered my gear and started walking toward a wisp of chimney smoke in the distance, and it was dark by the time I reached the little farm. As I started through the yard, a dog let out a howl. The chickens began to squawk. The farmhouse door opened and a boy stepped out on the porch. He looked in my direction, then raised a rifle to his shoulder. Hello there! It's a man! What were you shooting at, boy? Boy! Come here! It's a man! I shot a man out here! Jim? Mister? Uh, oh, thank the good Lord he ain't dead. I thought it was them coyotes after her chickens again, Pa. Uh, uh, don't try to say nothing there, stranger. Uh, that slug's in a tickler spot. We got to take care of how we handle him. Jim, go tell your ma to get some water boiling, then come back here and give me a hand. Well, stranger, uh, looking at you today, I'd say you're going to make it. Well, now, you just lie back there quiet. you still got a long way to go. <laughs> I don't mind telling you now. It looked pretty touchy there for a while. But we can thank the good Lord you're alive. And well, I guess we can thank you, too. There ain't going to be a man's blood on my son's hands. Not if I can help it. Mister, when I let go of that shot, I... I thought it was them coyotes out there. I figured to scare him off. I've been trying to teach a boy to be dang sure when he sends a bullet off. A gun is only as dangerous as the hand that holds it. Guns, I hate them. Pa, he's got some strong notions. I wasn't much older than Jim here when they took me off my farm back in Illinois, put a soldier suit on me, shoved a gun in my hand, and sent me out to kill. I wasn't a soldier, I was a farmer. But there's men might be living today. 
Except I shot him with that gun they gave me. Were you in a war, mister? Yes, but I trained to be a soldier. That's different. I... I understand how your father feels. I don't. I guess I ain't like Pa. Wish I could have been in the war. Um, you can say that, boy. Now it's over and done with. Uh, stranger, you ain't gonna be able to travel for a while yet. And we want to make you comfortable. Thank you. Oh, by the way, I, I'm James Buford, and this here is my son, Jim. My name is Paladin. You're Paladin? Paladin. The gunfighter? Well, I, I don't consider myself a gunfighter. Is that true, that you live by your gun? Well, yes, I guess that's right. He who lives by the sword shall perish by the sword. Paladin, it might cross your mind once in a while how you was nearly killed for a sneaking coyote. <laughs> Indeed it might. Jim's going to bring up the wagon. He'll drive you into town. You'll be able to pick yourself up a horse. You're sure now you feel up to traveling? I'm sure. I've got to be on my way. Thanks. Well, Paladin, I, I don't approve of the way you make your living, but I got to admit it's been awful nice knowing you. Well, I've enjoyed our talks, Buford. And I hope you get that rain soon. Oh, sure, it'll come. But I can just forget this crap. Corn all stunted and shriveled on the stalks. Might still be time for some winter wheat, though. Oh, say, you can do something for me in town. Sure. This letter here. It goes to Mr. Kyle at the bank. It's uh, about a loan we talked about. You really have to put up a fight for this land, don't you, Buford? Yeah. And it's been fighting me back. <laughs> every inch of the way. But I'll beat it yet. You ever feel like giving up? Lots of times. I'm hanging on for Jim there. When he's ready to take over, he's going to have a farm he can be mighty proud to own. Oh, ho, ho. All set, Colin. Good. Oh, so long, Buford. Good luck. So long. Bye, Pa. You'll be back for sundown, Jim. Seems too bad. What seems too bad? Won't be a very good time when we get into town. Oh? Good time for what? Well, town will be kind of empty. I was hoping there'd be a lot of folks around to see me drive up with a, with a gunfighter. No, what kind of nonsense is that? And I'm not a gunfighter. Well, however you call it. I've been sort of telling around how Paladin's been out at our place. <laughs> I see. You know, Mr. Paladin, Pa, you don't understand. All he thinks about is farm. I never did have a chance to talk to you much. I've been practicing with a gun I got, which I could have showed you. I think I can do pretty good. Don't you like farming, Jim? No, I don't want to be a farmer. I want to do something that uh, takes nerve, takes gizzard. I want to be like you. Uh, pull up here, Jim. I might as well deliver this letter to the bank for your father. Oh! Oh, yeah! Oh! Hey, Mr. Paladin, look. Those men. Quick, Jim, out. Duck down the other side of the wagon. Come on. Hold up, men, Mr. Paladin. They've been holding up the bank. Quiet. You want to be smart? Well, nobody in there move. We got rifles. Look. All those sacks they're carrying. That's the bank money. Yeah. Well, aren't you going to do something? I'm going to stay right here behind this wagon. But they'll get away. They're riding off. Help. 
Holler and go after him. No. You got your gun? Five men with rifles? You don't go up against odds like that. You're scared. Sure. Well, let's go talk to the sheriff. I never saw nothing like a sheriff, Brady. Right there in broad daylight. Those those men really got gizzard to do a thing like that. Oh, I'm not sure that's what it took, Jim. It figured their odds pretty well. What do you mean? Wouldn't take much studying of this town to learn that there aren't many people on the street, and the bank's nearly always empty at that time of day. But now we got to do a little figuring. Well, they can't be planning to ride far during the daylight in this open country. They can't be very far away now. You could spot them anywhere out there. Why don't you just go out after them? They're desperate men. All criminals are if the law catches up with them. If we'd face them out there in the open, it would mean just violent warfare. Somebody would get hurt bad. You're scared. Sure. No, we'll have to figure to get them cornered someplace where we'll have the odds on our side. From the forks on, the roads are so dry and hard and packed, it's impossible to pick up a trail. It's my hunch they're headed toward Wheatville. Wheatville? Yeah, it's about ten miles north of here. It's been a ghost town since the grasshopper invasion wiped out the crops in 74. Oh, that sounds like a fair hunch. I'll get a posse together. We'll ride up that way. Well, I'd be happy to ride with you. Glad to have you. Could I go along? Jim, your pa said you were to be home before sundown. Oh. Jim? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Have you ever been exasperated by a child who's reached the why stage? Why is the sky blue? Why do birds fly? Why do I have to go to bed? The questions are endless. But through questions like these, a young child learns. Encountering an inquisitive child, be grateful that here is a youngster whose mind has the capacity and the urge to grow. There are some without this capacity for mental growth. They are our mentally retarded children. 120,000 are born every year. That's three out of every 100 babies. Naturally, we want to help these retarded children to develop into normal, responsible members of the community. And we can. But the process is a long, slow one that requires many special services, expensive services, and continuing research into the causes and cures of mental retardation. Funds for education and research come from the National Association for Retarded Children. Won't you give now to your local unit in order that more children may be helped? Sheriff, those tracks in that draw back there, your hunch was right. This is where they're headed. Yeah, but as you can see, Wheatville was a pretty spread out little community. Where they're holed up is another thing. Hold it, fellas, hold it! Oh, oh. Yeah, this was quite a town. What's that tall tower up ahead there? Grain elevator, built by some eastern outfit when wheat was booming. Might be a likely hideout. Not a very healthy one. It's loaded with grain dust. Ah. It wouldn't take much to cause an explosion, huh? The tiniest spark in that thing would go right up. As dry as this country is, that could be bad. I hate to think about it. A fire that could start from an explosion in that elevator could wipe out the country for miles around. Well, if they are in there, it's a cinch we can't smoke them out. Wherever they are, when we corner them, they'll give up when they see how they're outnumbered. Let's ride up the elevator and have a look-see. Hey, wait a minute. Look. Hmm? Look back there, that horse. Isn't that Jim Buford? That sure is. Oh! 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 Oh, Palin. Jim, what are you doing here? I went home, got my gun, and cut across. Now, what's the idea? I want to be on the excitement. You're acting like a fool, kid. But there's nothing to do about it now. You get back there and behave yourself. Yes, sir. All right, men, let's ride to the grain elevator. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Well, 
Well, Sheriff? You'd say a horse is all right. Get away in that lean-to. Then they are in this grain elevator. No question about it. Well, how do we go about getting them out? They got the men stationed all around the place. I don't think they'll give us any argument when they know they're surrounded. None of your men are apt to go for their guns, are they? They know better. They all know what a shot into that grain dust would do. I guess the hold-up men do, too. For sure. Being jailed for bank robbery is better than being blown to kingdom come. Well, come on. Well, I'll be... Hey, look up there. Huh? On that ladder going up the side of the tower. That's Jim Buford. What's that crazy kid up to now? What's he doing climbing up there? He's heading for the cupola on the top of the elevator. He's got that gun, Paladin. You suppose he's figuring to get in there from the top and face those hold-up men? That's probably it. I'll lay odds there's one ain't got sense enough not to fire that grain dust. I think you're right. He's got to be stopped. (laughs) Jim! Jim, come down here. Paladin! I know a way to get in from the top here. Jim, climb down here. I know what I'm doing. You're a fool. All right, Jim, stay where you are. Just stay where you are. All right, now. Give me that gun. No, Paladin. I know a way to get in from the top here. Come on, we'll face those guys. Smoke them out. Give me that gun. No, I'm going in there. Him, I said give me that gun. Look out. Look out, we'll fall. Oh, give me that. Now. Now, you little fool. Climb down from here. Go on, climb down. All right. What's the matter with you, Paladin? Are you scared? Afraid to face up to those men in there? They got too much gizzard for you? I'll show you how much gizzard they have. Come on. What's the idea, boy? You were right, Sheriff. He was going in there to smoke him out. You want to set fire to the whole of Nebraska, boy? No, well, I... Come j- on, Paladin. Let's take him. Twenty of us. We got you surrounded. Let's have your rifles. Throw them out. Now come on out. Your hands behind your heads. We don't aim to give you no trouble, Sheriff. I didn't think so. Come on, let's move. Why, 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 they just give up without any fight at all. Sure. The odds were against them. Well, they got them all locked up. Guess I'd better get back to the farm. I guess you'd better. You'll never make it before sundown. You gonna give me back my gun? I suppose I'll have to. It's yours. I've got no right to it. But you haven't either. What do you mean? Nobody. Nobody has got a right to a gun unless he knows how to think when he handles it. Jim, you nearly killed me because you took a wild shot at a sound in the dark. You didn't think. Back there in Wheatville, you might have caused a disaster like this country has never known by firing into that grain dust because you didn't think. Well, I... How old are you? Fourteen. Yeah. Well, it seems to me it's about time you started thinking. Like a man. Instead of a crazy kid. Yes, sir. I guess so. Jim, there's something else. Yes, You were disappointed in me when I wouldn't stand up to five men with rifles, weren't you now? Well... Sure, sure you were. And you were let down when those hold-up men wouldn't fight it out with a posse of 20. Yeah, I guess that's right. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, this past week, I have known a man who will stand up to any odds and fight. Who? Your father. Pa? Mm Mm-hmm. When your father homesteaded his land, 
The government was betting that 160 acres, that he couldn't stick it out six months. But your pa won the bet. But that didn't end the struggle. There was the spring blizzard in 73 that wiped him out. But he came back fighting. There was the grasshopper invasion, 74. His crops just leveled to the ground, but he stood up to it. Now there's the drought. But he's not about to give up. He's negotiating alone right now so that he can keep up the fight, a fight against real odds. Do you understand what I'm saying, Jim? Yes, sir. I guess so. Your paw. Now there's a man doing a job that takes gizzard. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Miss Wong. Oh, Etha. Just give the room a lick and a promise. I'm going to lie down and rest a while. Oh, Etha. You have a hard trip, Mr. Polydon? Mm, yes. I'm tired. Oh, my. Too bad. Hmm? What's too bad? You work so hard for your money, Mr. Polydon. Too bad you can't make splendid investment like Hey Boy. What's that? Oh, hey boy, buy mining stock. Then he sell mining stock and make you lots of money. What? What? You mean hey boy was able to sell that stock he bought in the Golden West, uh, uh, whatever it was? Oh, yes, uh, Make lots of money. Now hey boy have investment in laundry business with his cousin leasing. He has, huh? Yes, uh, Laundry business are very good. Wow. Mr. Paladin. Yes? Excuse, please. But seems it's time you started thinking about your future. Maybe you and Hayboy should have a long talk. He'd tell you how to invest money. Gun Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin, with Ben Wright as Hey Boy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun Will Travel by Ann Dowd. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell, Barney Phillips, and Richard Beals. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel.